Welcome to the School of Calisthenics podcast with your hosts, Tim and Jacko. We are in for a treat today because when you want to get strong and know how to get strong, you go and find the strongest guys in the world and you speak to them. We have got one of those guys, Mark Bell, on the podcast today. You're excited for this one, hey Tim? I was buzzing for this one because the first question I want to know is like, what do you even think about calisthenics? This is a guy who's hit some incredible numbers <laughs> um, on his powerlifting uh, main key list, his deadlift, squat and bench press, like offensively big. Um, and I always said to Jacka before he hit record, I was like, what if you get on him? Like, what do you think about calisthenics, Mark? He's like, Just for people that can't lift. <laughs> <laughs> but now he's on board. He's, intro- he's smashing push ups out of the, uh, during lockdown. So he's embraced, he's embraced lockdown. And um, yeah, no, it was great to hear um, from him some of the protocols that he would and, and some of the um, I guess lessons that he's learned over his life of, of himself getting extremely strong and also helping others get strong and he's got a phenomenal gym that he'll tell you all about where membership is free you just pay in your blood, blood sweat tears and effort it reminded me a little bit of Mike from Mike's gym in that respect of, he <laughs> yeah, just wanted you to try that didn't he yeah, they will definitely get on. And my, my highlight and takeaway from this is you're going to come through and, and hear as you, as you go through the podcast. It's just that it doesn't matter whether it's powerlifting, calisthenics, CrossFit. There's the principles which are the same and we can learn from different disciplines. But actually, the, the, the real things that lead to success, they're all pretty consistent. So it's just great to get those messages from a different environment with a little bit of extra context and texture to really kind of hit home. And, and some of those mass- messages will definitely land really well. So I'm excited for you guys to enjoy this one. Just before we roll into this amazing podcast, we just wanted to thank the sponsors Red Light Rising for sponsoring the podcast. And if you are interested in improving your performance, your recovery, your health, your sleep, or any of these parameters uh, linked to the benefits of red light therapy, then we recommend checking out the products at Red Light Rising. They've got an offer, haven't they, Tim, for the listeners? They have. You can get 5% off any of their red light therapy products, and you can find them at redlightrising.co.uk. Go and find them on social. Guys are absolute legends. And we did a podcast with them recently. So if you want to get into a little bit more depth of understanding how it all fits together and what the benefits are, go and check that out as well. And just if you want anything else, a ton of information on their website, which is going to keep you healthy and performing well during these most challenging times. Yeah, and the code for that 5% discount is SOC5. That's SOC5 for 5% off at redlightrising.co.uk. Roll the jingle. So an absolute pleasure to uh, introduce Mark Bell to the podcast. Um, thank you, Mark, for, for sparing us some time. And I'm super, super excited to talk to one of the guys who knows more about strength training than lots and lots of many people in the world to get his input on, uh, on what it looks like to get strong. And I'm sure there's going to be some absolute knowledge bombs aplenty as, uh, as we get into this. I don't know what I did in my career to uh, end up on a calisthenics podcast. But <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess, reluctantly, here we go. <laughs> well, we got, you, we got to be strong. We got to be strong in calisthenics. One of the biggest things Tim says to people all the time: like you're just not strong enough when when you can't do the thing that you that you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, just those mark- toe touches, those toe touches <laughs> and twists can be really difficult, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm, kidding, off. Of We're off. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> this is what I wanted. This is what I thought was this is where I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> uh, just for the there might be just say that there's one person maybe that hasn't heard of, of Mark Bell, just in a real quick snippet. Could you just give us a, a real quick um you know background of uh yeah, sure. of, of what you're about, yeah. Yeah, I'm a I'm a uh, a husband and a dad of two kids, uh both of them at which are, are teenagers right now. So during this uh quarantine it's been a lot of fun to spend extra time with them. Um, although trying to get them to do their schoolwork has been a little <laughs> weird. Uh, I spent, you know, a huge majority of my life in doing what I have been super interested in, and that's just lifting weights. And uh, I got into powerlifting at a very young age. I saw Ted RCD bench press over 700 pounds. He's the first guy to ever do 700 pounds. I saw him do that on a WWF wrestling program. And uh, I saw that probably at the age of like 11. And I was like, I don't know what that was, but that was really cool. I would love to figure that out. And uh, I've been a huge wrestling fan for a long time, seeing, you know, Hulk Hogan and uh, Ultimate Warrior and, and uh, you know, all those super jacked guys. I was like, I, I want to figure out how to be jacked like that. These guys look amazing. And so I, I got into, I, you know, I didn't know anything about bodybuilding. I didn't know anything about any other 
kind of lifting. All I knew about was power lifting because at that time, the gym that I stepped foot into, everyone there was just there to get stronger. Like there, there was no fitness back then. And it was this kind of gross gym. Like it had that smell, like you guys know what the smell is. It just, it just had that stank on it, you know, for whatever reason. And there was a lot of like rusty dumbbells and rusty plates. And uh, it was just like, you know, mainly men. There was, there was really no, there was no girls to be seen anywhere. And there was maybe a couple older women in there, but there was no cardio pieces. It was all just iron and everyone in there had the same goal. And I always loved that. And I, I thought like, this is, this is amazing. Like everyone in this building has the same pursuit. And then later on in life, you know, fitness turned into what it, what it's turned into where there's so much separation uh, between, you know, bodybuilding, powerlifting, weightlifting, CrossFit, uh, body weight exercises, running and so on. But back then it was kind of all just, it was all one thing. And I fell in love with the sport and uh, started competing at the age of 12 and competed for 30 years and retired kind of more recently, but uh, powerlifting will always be in my blood. And at this time, this is, this is really great for me because um, I shut my gym down and I, I could, I could certainly still go into the gym and, and still do whatever I want because I own it and everything. But I thought it was like, I thought it was like kind of uh, being a traitor to my team and to my staff to go in there and keep lifting. And so uh, I decided you know what, I'm going to do body weight exercises and I'm going to run. So I'm excited to be on this podcast today uh, for that reason. Just one more thing I just want to add. And I, I think this is really important for everybody to understand that's listening is that, you know, really follow your interests. Like, what are you interested in? What's the thing that you like to do? Like, what do you really enjoy? What do you love to do? Sometimes you'll hear people say, you know, kind of follow your passion. And I, that's, that can be cool too, but sometimes people don't really understand what they're passionate about, but it's like, what are you into? What do you like to do a lot and figure out ways of doing more of that and then figure out a way to get paid for that. And you're <laughs> just, you're on your way to a really prosperous life because if you're doing this stuff that like, I don't, people ask me about motivation all the time. I, I don't, I don't really, I don't need motivation. It's already there. I, I'm interested in what I'm doing. You know, like how, how much motivation, uh, how much motivation do you need to go on a date with a really beautiful, hot girl? It's like, you don't really need any motivation. You're going to get, uh, you're going to get yourself cleaned up. You're going to shave. You're going to look the best you possibly can, wear the best possible clothes that you have. You don't need a fucking speech from David Goggins to, to do that. <laughs> you're like, wow, this girl's really hot. I'm going to, you know, uh, certainly not for me because I'm married, but I'm just saying anyway, <laughs> Follow, you know, follow what you're interested in. It's, uh, it's led me down the right path every single time. I'm just interested to get your thoughts, Mark, on, um, on this, like this current phase of training you're in, because, um, your gym is a, we, we, if we've got time, we'll talk a bit about the gym because it's an amazing concept that you've done with it. Um, how are you finding the transition from being sort of, uh, from the, from a powerlifting background, strength training background, and now finding yourself in an environment where bodyweight training has become sort of like a very accessible and, um, probably like, as you say, in terms of the, the landscape at the moment, it's an appropriate way to train. Like how's, how's that, how are you finding that? Are you missing, are you missing getting out of a barbell or are you, are you finding some challenge in your own body weight? I, I find it to be like super disappointing and like really pathetic that, just getting on the, like, I don't know, think about it. I bench pressed 578 pounds, right? So think about getting on the ground and just cranking out 40 pushups. Like it shouldn't be, <laughs> it shouldn't be anything. It should, it should be. And it's not hard. I mean, I can pop out 40 pushups any, at any time, but um, how long does it take to do 40 pushups? Like it doesn't take very long or even 50 pushups. I could probably do maybe 60 or 70 in a row, I guess, on a, on a decent day. Um, but my point is, it's like, that seems like that doesn't seem very impressive compared to a 578 pound bench press. And then this morning I did 200 squats and 200 pushups and I did my hundred squats in a row just cause I wanted to kind of see how that felt. And it was terrible. Like my legs started to burn, you know, my, <laughs> and, and it's like, come on, dude, a hundred squats. Like I weighed 235 pounds. I, I've squatted 1,080 you know, and here I am, you know, just, this, it, it's, it's, uh, it's demoralizing how, how difficult it can be. And then you start to take other movements that have, 
you know, more complex movements that require a little bit more movement or coordination. And then you're really a dead duck. Like when you do something like a, like a lunge or you do something like a burpee, I, I don't think people understand how genius a burpee is, you know, going from like horizontal to vertical and the, the amount of like just dynamic movement that's required. And I know everyone hates them. The amount of dynamic <laughs> movement that's required to do a burpee and the metabolic cost of doing a burpee or, or even the metabolic cost of doing a lunge. I just think that these are things that we haven't maybe even thought about before, but now we're kind of forced to uh, just going out and doing, you know, uh, <clears throat> Corey Gregory, a good friend of mine, he talks a lot about lunges. He does like 10 minute lunges. He lunges a mile. I mean, he's a crazy bastard, <laughs> but he also had, you know, he, he promotes and he encourages people to do um, like an 800 meter lunge, you know, go lunge around a track twice. And that's, that kind of stuff is really brutal, but the metabolic cost of that and what that can do for you in terms of uh, being lean, I mean, for, for one, it's going to help chew up a lot of, a lot of glu glucose, a lot of glycogen. Uh, number two, it could help just burn a lot of overall calories and it might get your heart rate up. Yeah, it would definitely get your heart rate up enough to be in like a fat burning zone. So you're going to be kind of burning everything just by mm. doing a lunge. I mean, that sounds it, it makes it, this at this time, this, this kind of stuff makes me feel a little bit stupid. Cause I'm like, why the fuck haven't I been doing this stuff all the time anyway? Like I I've always loved pushups. I'll always, I've always done pushups. I've always done pull-ups. I've always done dips and stuff like that. But I, I'm just thinking to myself, you know what, when this quarantine's over, you really owe it to yourself to make sure that you stay on top of these. I've been doing a minimum of a hundred pushups every day and a hundred squats every day. And I just see absolutely no reason uh, why to stop it. So I'm enjoying it personally. That's awesome. And just uh, to put some, cause I did some, uh, for, you mentioned some of the numbers there, but um, just for the, for the metric uh, listeners in the UK and, and you can give it the pound uh, equivalents. Cause I actually didn't write the pounds down, but um, you said, what was your pounds squat that you did? A thousand eighty squat. That's 490 kilograms for anybody who wants it in the, in the translation. You, your bench press I've got down at 387 kilos. Yeah, it was 854 pounds. Uh, and a 347 kilo deadlift. Yeah, Serious. A, uh, seven, yeah, 766 deadlift, yep. Yeah, unbelievable. So um, one, one thing that we wanted to get into, Mark, was a little bit around that, um, that strength side of stuff. There's a lot of people that come into calisthenics, and, and as Jacko said in the intro, that we... Um, we always prioritize strength. Things are much easier when you're stronger. Um, and there's a lot of stuff when you're like, you, you come into calisthenics and you, sometimes people will look at it from the outside and a handstand, for example, doesn't require a lot of strength. You don't need to be that strong. You just need to have good balance. Well, we like to do a freestanding handstand pushups and we're quite into the kind of how do we push the strength elements and components. But it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's one of those things where people are like, they come to a workshop and they're like, show me the drill or the progression that I need to do to do this thing. And I'm like, no, you're doing everything right. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that you're just not strong enough. And they're like, they don't want to hear that answer. They want to go, no, 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 come on, there must be an exercise. And show me something else that I can do. I'm like, no, no, you've got, you've got to go away and do three months, maybe six months of strength work because it takes time. Just give us a little bit of, a, of an insight into what a, a, a sort of a, a powerless training program, someone who's looking to get strong, what might that look like from a, from a, a longer term perspective of what goes into, and obviously these numbers that you've got are built over years, but what goes into, into a performance in terms of building a, a solid amount of strength? I think it's um, a really key component to being strong is adaptation. And a really key component to gaining size is adaptation. And, and first and foremost, you know, um, if you're trying to get strong, if, if getting bigger is an option for you, that's uh, spot number one to look is just to eat a lot more food. Um, and this is, this is in regards to lifting weights. Um, this is not in regards to lifting your own body weight or, or trying to run or it's not really conducive to much else to be totally honest. Um, but it, it can be really productive in terms of moving weight. So if you're, you know, um, you know, if you're, if you're under, you know, a hundred kilos or under 90 kilos or something like that, then that would be, that would be a place where I would, I would look if you, if you feel like you can afford to gain weight without getting, you know, 
quote unquote too fat, then uh, then that might be that might be something to consider because that's going to be that's going to get you strong uh, faster than anything else. But you want adaptation, but you want to make sure that you don't have too much forced adaptation. And what I mean by that is you want to only be able to do what you can do. And, and this kind of brings me to something I've been kind of harping on a little bit more recently is that I feel like, I feel like hard work is not necessarily a myth, but I feel like hard work is a misconception. And what I mean by that is that you're, you should always be prepared for the next level of what it is you're about to do. And if you're not prepared for the next level of what it is you're about to do, it doesn't mean you're hardcore. It actually just means that you're dumb. <laughs> it means that you're stupid because you're not learning the training process. The, the le understanding and learning and being humble about the training process is, is really, really crucial. It's going to take time to get stronger. Sometimes when somebody comes to me and they say, hey, I want to improve my squat, they'll say, what can I, what should I do? And, and this is just, somebody who sends me like a short message on Instagram and I'll say, do eight reps for a month and then do six reps for a month and then do four reps for a month and then do two reps for a month and then try a one rep max. I mean, that's months of training, right? But that's a very slow adaptation. And the way that I would have somebody do it is I wouldn't even need to, um, I wouldn't even need to make it like exact. It wouldn't have to be super precise, but the basics of it would be, Hey, week one, do something, very, very manageable. Do something that is so simple uh, and kind of feels easy. You know, week two, just bump it up from there. Week three, make it a little harder. And week four should be something that's difficult. And then cycle back through it again for those, uh, those couple of months. But it's adaptation uh, and it's not annihilation. And that's, that's the key component right there is that you don't want to just go in there and, uh, and destroy yourself every single day. Um, if you, if you can kind of think of it this way, um, if, if I was, if I was teaching you, if I taught you every day that one plus one equals three, then anytime one plus one came up, you would always say three because that's all that you know, you're learning the, you're learning the incorrect facts. You don't have the correct information. And the only way to have the correct information in your body is to get the correct sensations and the correct message to your body every single time that you train and getting stronger is actually a really interesting process because you should be able to actually feel it. You know, if I had you guys do say like uh, a workout where you did four sets of four reps with like a hundred kilos, you know, 220 pounds on say like a bench press or something like that. Right. Let's say that that's an appropriate weight for you. If you can do all four reps um, every single time and you can match the way that you did your last rep of your last set with the way the first rep of the first set looked, then we are on the right path. We're on the right track. That's how it should look. Your first rep should look, uh, I'm sorry, your last rep should look identical to the first rep of set number one in, for the most part. Now, every once in a while, you're going to have, you're going to roll the dice every once in a while. You're going to be competitive every once in a while. You're just going to do what your buddy does, you know, but th those things should be few and far between 98% of your training should be really, really clean, really, really crisp. And you should not be missing lifts. Right. Yeah. Jackie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah Sorry. And then, um, so j then some of the things like just adding on to what, sort of questions that we would get or people things that people struggle with would be then like the the frequency of of that training when they're doing strength training we'll often get people um just because it's it's calisthenics it's body weight training they might they might think that um i'm going to do x every day or, or whatever it may be and it's actually the thing they're trying to work on is like a handstand push-up which is like a, a you know your whole body weight in a, in a vertical pressing movement if someone wanted to get strong at just a, a military press, you wouldn't, we wouldn't suggest doing that every day because that's going to help you get, get strong at that. Um, where, where people sort of struggle with that overtraining, what's the, what would you be your sort of 
what's your recommendations for people as a, a it varies from person to person but in terms of the dose of that what would that look like in a week for someone in terms of those you, know, you talked about the rep those sort of lower rep ranges eight and below mm-hmm. but what would be how often would you be doing something you know if you were wanting to improve your vertical push your military press um as right. an example I, I think, you know, it goes back to what I said in the beginning of the show already was that, you know, you want to really lean into your interest. So yeah. let's, let's say that you love doing shoulder presses. Well, if you love doing shoulder presses and I tell you to do them once a week, you already aren't listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're already off on your own plan with your own program. So the only thing I, I would say with, with what I would suggest with something like that is the more often that you're going to do something or the more and or the more intensity that you're going to bring something, then you have to toggle those two between each other because having high frequency, high volume um, and high intensity uh, all the time is, is a recipe for disaster at some point. Uh, You could make a lot of progress in the beginning with that. And, you know, most of the time, the, the odd thing about stuff like that is, again, we go back to adaptation is some, sometimes people just survive it. They're, you know, really dumb in the gym. They're really stupid with what they do. And uh, despite all that, they, their body somehow miraculously, miraculously survived it. And uh, now they squat 700 pounds and they got, you know, 33 inch quads or something because <laughs> all they do is overtrain all the time. So that's that's where people get excited and they're like oh i'm gonna train like this guy or i'm gonna train like this girl because this is what they do and then they're they're driving up their frequency driving up their intensity driving up their volume i think the best strategic thing is to play the long game and to say i don't really care a ton about where i am in two three months i care more about where i am in two or three years because it's going to take you it might take you a long time to really uh, pass people up, especially on certain areas where um, you may be weak. Now, you know, going back to the example of a handstand push-up, well, a handstand push-up is uh, handstand push-up and handstand walks is a total joke to someone who's been doing gymnastics most of their life, right? right? Yeah. So somebody who's been doing gymnastics most of their life, uh, you know, a handstand, like handstand walks is probably like, maybe part of like a drill in the beginning, you know, and same with like any like ring dips and all those things. I mean, CrossFitters go crazy about some of the stuff that, uh, that they have to do on a, on the rings. But meanwhile, in an Olympic competition, when they do the rings, that's the starting position (laughs) of everything else that they're about to do is, is just doing the muscle up. Like the muscle up is, is just to get yourself ready for. It's it's not even that it's like walking in. (laughs) Yeah, right, right. It's like walking in. And so when you start to factor those things in and we look at like an Ed Cone and, uh, you know, Ed, Ed only squatted once a week, but, um, he would have been able to squat three or four times a week without any problem. And his squats probably would have been even better than they were, even though he's the, he's the goat. And the reason why I say that though, is just because he was built for it. So for myself though, I would have to be a little bit more cautious. I'm, I can bench a lot more often, you know, so each person's going to kind of have their own. So what I, what I would suggest on that is like, try something out about three times a week. Try to have a, uh, and this is really simple, just try to have a light-ish day, a medium day, and a heavy day. Your lighter day, you can do a little bit higher reps. Your medium day, you can have a medium rep range bracket. And then your heavy day, you can kind of go for it. And you can kind of progressively increase all three of those over a period of time. And then maybe you can get rid of one or two of them. But it really becomes a lot of fun when you start saying, all right, I'm going to train the squat, you know, three times a week. I'm going to train the bench twice a week. I'm going to train the deadlift once a week. And then, you know, two months from now, I'm going to flip all that around and I'm going to deadlift three times a week. And then you get to see how your body reacts to it. And it really ends up being, it ends up being a lot of fun because you end up, uh, you end up kind of seeing like, like where you're good and where you suck and just learn from it. Try to learn from it. Take notes. Yeah. Well, I love the fact that one of the things you said in that was around, I don't know if he's necessarily said, the word patience but you were saying for people to be in it for the long game and um and that and, and trusting in that and trusting in and embracing that getting strong is a process um and that's something that we try to 
encourage people with when they when they want the like Tim was saying, where they want the quick answer, the quick reason, like what what am I not doing right to to do to do my handstand push up or or whatever it or my muscle Let me up just or whatever el- it be. I'll elaborate on that a little a little bit more. So I've been lifting for 31 years yeah. <laughs> and I can go. still, I can still do everything and anything that I want to do. Almost. There's a couple things that I would, there's a couple of things I'm working on that I don't have access to yet, but 31 years. And, and I was a professional wrestler for five years. Um, I spent most of my life playing football and uh, you would figure that I would be a lot more banged up and, and screwed up and messed up. And as I mentioned those, those numbers uh, earlier, I was a really highly competitive power lifter. I lifted all the weights that I ever wanted. I, you know, I, I pursued an 800 pound bench and I, then, it, then it turned into me wanting to do a 900 pound bench. I wanted to do a thousand pound squat and that later turned into me wanting to do 1100. And I kind of just started getting kind of greedy with everything. But again, just think about, I can do any and everything that I want to do. I can do these body weight exercises every single day. I can go out for a run. The only thing that I'm missing that I would love to have that I just, I, I worry that I'm going to hurt myself is like, I don't have full access to like just going out and like sprinting. Um, but it's like, I'm so new to like messing around with any sort of running and I'm just really taking my time. If I just go out and sprint, I'm going to probably, you know, tweak my hip or tweak my hamstring. I'm just not in shape enough to to do that at the moment, but everything else I can go like hell. Like if you guys were like, Hey, you know, hit up some burpees with us. Like, I think I, I think you guys would be like, Holy shit. Like he's pretty, he's pretty quick. I can't move yeah. very good. Like my mobility is not, not great, but um, I can kind of overcome some of that with like some power and some explosiveness. I think it'd be fun for us. Uh, hopefully we're going to get um, to America at some point. If we want to be on to come on a little bit of a tour and we'd love to come and drop in and see if we can get you into a human flag. <laughs> yeah you know that stuff that stuff is crazy you know that that's um there's just so many different levels of strength right and i yeah, yeah. i you know as as a young kid that was you know banging weights in the gym all the time i i kind of always you know of course when you look at that stuff you're you always hate on like whatever it is that you can't do so i'd be like oh, <laughs> look at those look at those wimps man why aren't they lifting a barbell what are they doing you know but like really it's it's uh it's awesome to have that elasticity in your joints. And I think anyone that's, uh, you know, getting older would certainly, you know, be in total admiration of, of things like that. Like just being able to jump up on a box, you know, just off of one foot and then, you know, land on that same foot. Um, just simple stuff like that is like, um, I mean, those are going to be things that when you're 60 and when you're 70 and you go to get up out of a chair, those are going to be the things that you wish your body was made of. Those are going to be the things it's not going to really matter a ton that you're, that you squatted 700 pounds at one point. That's mm-hmm. probably going to be more to your detriment than it will be to your benefit. Yeah. And, and uh, well, we, we talk an awful lot about, um, about longevity and seeing that sort of talking about mobility and quality of movement as well as like, as well as strength, but just speaking of human flags, am I right? Did you have Ross Edgley um, on your podcast? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we had yeah we had ross uh recently and um uh, that guy is uh just unbelievable the amount of stuff in, yeah do. so he before it was actually before he we, we we had a session with him before he did the great british swim um and it was a really good example of like the guy is just like an incredible specimen and strength is is something that is absolutely no problem for him and we we taught him how to do a human flag in 45 minutes and he'd never done anything like that before but it was a case of like he had the strength there and it was a really Mm -hmm. good example of like when you've got strength and he does a variety of different training that then he could adapt to be able to use that strength in something that was you know a human flag people spend months and months and years potentially trying to trying to be able to do in the calisthenics world and he does it in 45 minutes because he had that that bedrock of of strength mm. that he's built up over the, you know as you were saying, like he's built that up over a long period a long long period of time yeah you well, have to wanna... be uh, strong for your body weight to be able to pull that one yes, off, right exactly yeah 100 percent. yeah yeah they're, they're getting big and eating just uh, just getting bigger in calisthenics we have to marry that strength with um yeah strength to weight ratio effectively being heavier yeah yeah you can be heavier <laughs> well, you just have to be stronger <laughs> 
I just want to get into I, I, I'm the, the 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 kick the coach inside of me and the and the geek wants to talk a little bit of numbers in terms of uh, training program prescription and some of the stuff that you've done and, and there's just a couple of things I wanted to do before we get into that um, a little bit just to clear up on because it's something which um, we've there's been some research papers come out about it recently and the onset of velocity based training is sort of started to kind of become more prevalent in a, in sports science and, and training um, systems you mentioned before about you the, the first rep should be the same as the last rep so that's on set one and then the same do you think would apply to set four and what where i'm kind of going with that that is should we be training to failure and, and or should we always be sort of like making sure that we can we can meet the required um target reps and sets that we've got on a program to create a specific adaptation because there'll be oftentimes people will fail a rep and like is that a good thing or not or should we just be keeping a little bit back so that we are consistent with the quality um you know, having ha- having the majority of your training come from quality reps, I think is crucial. Um, I'm trying to think if I can think of, I'm like, just making sure this is 100% accurate. So I, I've never had anybody at Super Training Gym, and so I'm just going to go off of my own experience. I've never had anyone at Super Training Gym that lifts like shit and is what I would consider insanely strong. You know, so that's something to keep in mind. Like most of the time when people did a lift at super training, whether it was Stan efforting with a 600 plus pound bench, or if it was, you know, Eric Spoto benching 675 for two, or, you know, whether it was Stan, you know, pulling over 800 pounds or him squatting 900 or, or myself squatting a thousand pounds. We've had many other thousand pound squatters in the gym. It was always like, Oh, like, yeah, dude, you could do 1,025 easy, you know, you could do 1,050, you know, you could do. Now in training, there might be some like missteps here and there because uh, especially for us, because we utilized a lot of conjugate system where we had bands and we had chains. And so we may have in, uh, we may have uh, inaccurately figured out like, you know, where our max would end for the day. And so we may have been like off a little bit, but you can kind of gauge that as you get closer to your weights anyway. Um, one thing to be, one thing to be cautious of with training is, uh, you know, people kind of like, ah, oh, you need to listen to your body. Um, I would say, don't do that. <laughs> Cause you're, you know, you're, you're, you're an athlete, you know, and you're going to always tell yourself like, Oh, how do you feel? You know, it's like, I wear this like aura ring thing. Right this thing tells me about my, uh, my sleep, but I'm still going to train hard regardless of whether the thing gives me a, a good sleep score or a bad sleep score <laughs> because I'm an athlete. I'm kind of an idiot. You know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to, I'm not going to like let anything slow me down or, or be in my way. But I would say, you know, that when you're, when you're training and let's say that you were going to go for, uh, you know, a, 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 a PR squat or something like that. Um, and you just, you just weren't, you weren't feeling good for the day. I mean, that is an important time to probably listen to your body. Um, but for the most part, you're probably going to usually be the, the opposite way. You're probably always going to convince yourself that you're okay. Your knee is a little sketchy and you're, you're, you know, prescribed to do these squats for the day and, and you just go in and like, you know, force yourself to do it anyway. I mean, those, th- those things aren't, those things aren't really smart. So you, what I always did is I always hadn't, an intent of the day. I always had, I always had it kind of at least just mapped out in my head. Like what, what was I going to do for the day? And to answer your question and to bring it back, your, you know, to clarify that your, your first, uh, your, your last rep of, of even your last set should look like your first rep of your first set. In my opinion, I think stuff should look really clean and really crisp. Um, Again, you're going to be sending your body the wrong message over and over and over again. Um, another, another way to look at this is um, there's something in boxing called the sp- – I, I, did, I did some boxing when I was young. There's something in boxing called the sparring partner mentality. So the sparring partner kind of eventually becomes like a punching bag. And he never really learns to like fire off combinations and never really learns to gain that confidence of like, yeah, I'm whooping this guy's ass now. And he never, he never like truly learns what that other side feels like. He's just like an idiot. He's just getting punched in the head all the time. 
And so I think with your, with your training, you want to make sure that you don't end up with that sparring partner syndrome where you're just kind of always, uh, you're always getting your ass kicked and you're not really, you're never sending the right message to your body. Um, in Rocky, when, uh, Apollo Creed's people that when they call him in to, uh, to fight Apollo Creed, Rocky is such a loser that he doesn't, he can't even accept the fight with Apollo Creed because he's like, Hey, you know what? Like, to be honest that like at first he thinks he's there to be a sparring partner. And you're like, you don't understand Rocky. Like you're here to fight for the world championship. And he's like, Oh no, you know, I, I'm like a journeyman fighter. Like it, it wouldn't be a good fight. Like he doesn't even understand because he's been sending his body the wrong message for so many years. And I, I see a lot of people kind of get into that habit where with their lifting, they think it's so important to go to failure all the time. They think it's so important to, to do that. And I just think you're continually sending your body the wrong message. Now, if we're talking about bodybuilding and we're talking about you doing stuff, even as a power lifter for hypertrophy and you doing assistance work, that is a totally different story than I think that's where uh, some training to failure can be really, really beneficial, both mentally and physically. Yeah, I think it's a really good point for, for in calisthenics though as well. If we're trying to do something that's quite um, technical a lot of the time, it, those, those, those reps, as you said, like having, having clean stuff and having stuff that, isn't messy when you're trying to squeeze out the last one of a, a handstand push-up or a muscle or whatever you're it's the same thing you you like i like what you're saying around the you're giving your body or you're giving your brain the wrong message almost like this is an acceptable way to do this rep and if it isn't then it's then it then it needs not to be there um, let me ask really you uh, let me ask you how effective has it been you know being in the gym and let's say that you're working on some like jumps. Let's say you're doing a burpee and, you know, in between that, you're trying to like jump over something that's, uh, you know, progressively higher, or maybe you're doing burpees into like a muscle up or something crazy, you know, something crazy like that. Yeah. How effective has it been when you've struggled and when you've been, um, you can you kind of keep missing the rep, like you can't do it. And then your training partner or another coach comes over, tries to show you, you still can't do it. And then how effective has it been to get really mad and like turn music up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't help solve the problem. Now, again, it's, it's what you're interested in. So it's okay to do some of that, but like most of your training shouldn't look like that. Like, yeah. like, Hey dude, like just let me slap you in the back harder. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like no dude, just stop, you know? And, in, in, in at super training, I always say that some of the strongest things I've ever seen people do is just take weight off the bar. I've seen people say, Hey, you know what? Like I, I'm not lifting it the right way. Right. And we're like, yeah, you know, you need to you need to hone in on your form and technique a little bit better, you know? And so sometimes we'll take some weight off the bar. We might take one of the big plates off the bar and they might do it better. And then we'll work our way back up and give them another chance and their opportunity. But what I've always taught people at super training is you have to prove to me that you know how to lift that every single time. I don't care if it's a hundred pounds, 200 pounds, 300 pounds, every single time that you lift it, you have to show me that you know how to lift it. That's how we put more weight on the bar. More weight doesn't go on the bar unless you show me that you know how to lift the weight the correct way. Awesome. I think what's really good about this is it's um, it, you're interested right back to when you started at the beginning, Mark, and you mentioned around finding your passion and following these different disciplines of powerlifting or CrossFit or whatever it might be. Um, my background is in strength and conditioning, and we um, it's just so good to, that you the, the same principles are just consistent through all of these modalities. Yeah. It's just how we express it, but the same principles of quality, earning the right to progress, managing your ego, just from a from a, both a technical perspective of how we go about lifting, training, but then also the mindset and the psychology um, that goes with it. So it's really just a, a positive, and that's what that's what I was hoping we we're going to get from, yeah. from you today. Yeah, it's almost been the same conversation. It's just that it finishes with. You're talking about weights on a bar, whereas we're, we're, we're trying to we're trying to encourage people to embrace that same process. Um, it's just as, as the outcome is slightly different. We're moving our we're moving our body. We make it rather than progressively adding weight. We just make it progressively harder rather than um, in terms of the body angles and shapes that we're making like a, a, a handstand push. It was obviously a, a much 
more difficult push-up um not only because it's in a different plane but there's the balance you know if you're going to freestand in that your feet on the wall there's that balance element to it as well and there's a whole series of little progressions that we take people on in between those but the the process the like you say tim the, the thought process behind it the trading mentality towards it and the the emphasis on the quality of how we're going through that and managing your ego is yeah it, it's good to it's good to hear the same sort of the same messaging yeah i think how to be how to be good at anything is you know the same for yeah, you yeah. know it's it's it doesn't matter what it is no matter if you're you know trying to be good at accounting or if you're trying to be good at uh you know, making money, if you're trying to be good at um, relationships, I mean, it's all the same, it's all the same mix mash of words, you know, and if we were to have, you know, 20 people in a room for a seminar and say, okay, what do you think the keys uh, to su success are for lifting weights, right? And, you know, they would shout out, you know, five things. And, it, you know, might be a little disagreement about what those five things are exactly. There might be some different interpretations of what different words mean and stuff like that. And then if you were to say, okay, you know, what, what are uh, five things that uh, are necessary for success with calisthenics? What are five things that are necessary? You know, if you get, kept going yeah. through different things, all the words would be the same pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you might see a little interchanging here and there, but the same thing that you could say for calisthenics would be true for lifting, uh, would be true for just about anything. I mean, there might be some physicality in there. So like, you know, for example, if, uh, you know, and when, if it comes to like making money, somebody might not think, you know, being strong is, is related to that. So, or if you said, Hey, what's the key to being successful in power? I think you could just sum it up by saying, <clears throat> you know, being very strong, but I'm talking more about the general words, you know, yeah. consistency, yeah. you know, those, those are, those are the things. And then how do we get consistency? We get consistency by having it be something that you're into. That's mm -hmm. the easiest way to do it. If, if you're, you know, what, what uh, I think is important for people to walk themselves through, you know, what is it that you're really after? Um, you know, do you want to have a faster, you know, mile time or something like that? Um, if you do, then you're out there doing all the work that's necessary for it. If you find yourself dragging your feet and not really wanting to do it a lot of times, well, that just tells you that you don't have the interest level that you thought mm. you did. And that's okay. That's totally fine. It's totally fine to have like a hobby that's like an A hobby, a B hobby, a C hobby, right? It's okay to put these things in different categories, but just realize that, you know, that's where that's at. I mean, I used to spend, when I was powerlifting, I'd spend four or five, six hours in the gym. Like it did, it was irrelevant how long it took, uh, was not factored in. I wasn't like, oh man, I, you know, I need to you know get this workout in, in 30 minutes or, or whatever. It was never that way. It was always like, I'm staying here until I fucking figure this shit out. I don't care how long that takes. Mm. And it was because that that's where the interest level was. It was just, I, I wanted to try to be the best that I could possibly figure out to be. And I realized that that didn't take 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. You make it. So I'm trying to, you're making me think of like, um, I like the, I like, I like thinking outside of training as well, but uh, which, which you make me think and go in. Okay. The, the, the thing I, like I love, I love the 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 challenge of training, and the uh, I love always loved training, and you know I had a background in rugby before, before doing this, and um, understanding what makes me like using that thing that I re like you say using the thing that I really like doing, and going what are the things that I do during that that are like really effective and and make me be able to be good at it and and see progress and have success in it. And then going, right, take those, take those things that you do really well in that scenario, Jacko, and then go, well, what about these other areas of your life where you want to see more progress? Why don't you try and start applying those same sort of principles that you're doing really well over here where you're training, put them into some other areas of your life that you want to see progress in and, and becoming your own sort of, you, you, you know what works for you because you've got one area that's working for you, like use them again in, uh, in other areas rather than I think sometimes we look at, different parts of our, our lives and different things that we want to be good at or better at and and perhaps don't use the same sort of tools or principles that are making us successful in 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 one area i, I really yeah no, i really i really like that you're you're, you're making one of the brain things, really tick 
Yeah, good. One of the things that uh, really helped me as a power lifter, and I think what set me apart from a lot of other lifters is that, um, and, and, you know, a lot of lifters do this, but like, I just talked a lot of shit, you know, I, I, I was into like boasting up my own ego a little bit, even at the expense of like hurting somebody else's feelings, but it was just part of my game. Like I wasn't really truly trying to hurt anybody, but a lot of people that lifted with me at that time, they were like, man, it was, it was, it was tough to lift with you because somebody would do a lift on the other side of the gym. They'd hit a big deadlift and everybody'd be super pumped for them. Then I'd walk over there and do it for 10 reps without a warm up. you know, think, <laughs> things like that just just because I could do it you know but those were things that made me tick and those were things that like gave me a good challenge and I was like oh can I do that and then a lot of times I got smacked in the mouth hard you know when I again when training with Stan Efferning I mean he used to kick my ass you know uh, pretty much all the time I mean he's, he's a tough guy to uh, he's a tough guy to beat but if I look at those things and look at some of the characteristics that I had during powerlifting those are the same things that you guys see on Instagram of me like talking shit and saying hashtag be rich. And I, I might make fun of all the other uh, companies out there that make uh, slingshots and hip circles. And I mean, how many, how, how many companies have this, you know, I, I created this, I invented this, <laughs> this came from, this came from in here and this came from in here, but every motherfucker makes this right. And so, some of that, like some of me calling those people out is, it's just what I did in powerlifting. So it's like, that is, that is, uh, it's not something I even truly believe in. I don't really even care what other people do. I don't care what other companies do. Uh, we're going to rock our stuff the best that we possibly can. And we're going to be the best at what we do, the best way that we can do it. And I'm not too uh, preoccupied with what anybody else does, but I also just, I, 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 um, I'm amused by it. Like I like calling people out. I like talking shit a little bit. I like, I like to stir the pot a little bit. And that's been some of the stuff that I've been posting recently about uh, the coronavirus and stuff like that. And, and just saying, Hey, I don't think governments can really do much to stop a virus. And it's just opinion. And then other people, you know, they get flared up, they get triggered, they get, uh, you know, super upset by, by what I'm saying. And that's, you know, I started like the race to zero followers just in, in, again, just it's just a way to get people to think like are you really thinking for yourself and also like if you're a fan of mine you're a follower of mine you've been a fan of mine and a follower of mine because I've been posting out stuff that's of interest to me and then you found it to be interesting as well well I don't want my post just based off of likes and based off of comments I don't want my post to be uh, edited by you because of the stimulation that I might get off of X amount of likes. So if I post a picture about me and I talk about the carnivore diet, then that gives me a certain result. And it's gonna have the same result every single time. It's always gonna work. It's gonna cause a lot of conversation. Uh, it's gonna help people a lot. But then I'm not allowed to talk about anything else. Like I can't talk politics. I can't mention my own views about the coronavirus. I can't mention, I can only talk about like, training or powerlifting and it's like well powerlifting is just uh it's just something that i did you know it's not who i am uh, you know who i am is i'm again i'm a dad i'm a husband those things are first and foremost to me and i'm a citizen you know i'm i'm a somebody who is uh in a community i'm part of my community just like you guys are part of your community and i want to pe see people thrive and i want to see people do well and so uh, I'm going to voice my opinion about those things. I'm not going to like sit on my hands. I don't think that, I don't think that sitting around and uh, quarantine is like, I just don't, I just don't think it's productive. I don't think it's good at all. I think the people that are unhealthy, they should, uh, they should stay out of harm's way the best they possibly can. But you know, as soon as you go to view your opinions about stuff, if you guys talk about anything other than calisthenics, unfortunately people might, kind of get upset and lose interest in what you're saying but they should understand that you guys are are humans and that you have your own uh your own thoughts uh surrounding many different topics other than just calisthenics whilst we know you're probably really enjoying the podcast there's something else that we think you will also really enjoy and that is the virtual classroom if you're a beginner we have got an eight week free beginners program designed to help you start your calisthenics journey where you're going to learn how to move better get superhuman strong and have a lot of fun along the way 
If you're ready to take your training to the next level and learn some of the iconic calisthenics movements like a frog to handstand or a muscle up, then inside the virtual classroom you are going to find all the training programs and educational information that you need. But rather than keeping you from the podcast for any longer than necessary, head over to schoolofcalisthenics.com where you're going to find a bodyweight training resource which is different to anything else available anywhere. Tim, I think they're ready to get back to the podcast. Yeah, I want to see you mention a word there, Mark, that I really wanted to get a bit of input in because it links into super training in the gym. Um, and I, I heard you speak on a podcast a couple of years ago, actually, I think. And um, and your your gym setup is now free for members, um, as I understand it. What's the community like in terms of um, at your gym and the, and the culture of your gym? Because it's quite a unique thing. Uh, your background and, and your strength training experience, well, it has also got a culture of its own. What's it like at your gym? And is it the sort of place where... Anybody can just rock up on day one and, and they can walk in and be like, okay, cool, I, I feel part of this community. Or have you got to, have you got to be on the sort of sniffing salts and, uh, and any, heavy any metal strong. before you're allowed to get in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, I guess it's kind of like, a, like an unwritten rule is like that you need to be strong. But that's, um, you know, that's people's own interpretation of super training. But really, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, any, anyone can come in there and train. The gym is free um, Saturday and Sunday from, uh, you know, as soon as we get out of quarantine Saturday mm-hmm. and Sunday from nine to one is when we allow guests to come in there. And, um, I made the gym free years ago. It wasn't always, it wasn't always free. It didn't always start out that way, but the second that I had the opportunity to make it free, I made it free. I really love lowering the barrier of entry into fitness and into strength. I feel like it's complicated and, you know, again, like just kind of going back to like where we're at now, I think that where we're at now with all these uh, deaths and all these people getting really sick, I think this is payment. I think this is a, uh, this is payment for many years of people neglecting their bodies and people neglecting their nutrition. And I'm not saying that every single person that has died from the coronavirus is fat and, uh, and or out of shape, nor am I saying that they deserve it. But I'm saying that something shitty always happens out of neglect. And I I just, I don't like seeing people like that. I want people exercising. I want people moving. And that's why I'm a big promoter of a lot of stuff that's free. 10 minute walks, push ups, squats. Um, They say the best things in life are free. And I've found that to be, uh, I found that to be pretty much true. You know, when it comes to, uh, you know, these 10 minute walks, it's like, man, you can just, anyone just anyone can like walk, you know, and even, even in terms of power lifting, I've found that anyone can power lift. Maybe not anyone can power lift the way that Larry wheels power lifts or the way that Ed Cohn did it, but anyone, <clears throat> anyone can squat, anyone can bench, anyone can deadlift. It's just a matter of like how much weight can they handle? You know, maybe for a squat, maybe, you know, maybe somebody who's 75 years old and has bad knees and, <clears throat> and a bad back, maybe they can only do a quarter squat and maybe they can only do it with a six pound dumbbell in their hands or something, but they can still squat. And that's what I've always loved about powerlifting, strength training. I have never in my life, I've never met one person that doesn't possess the ability to get stronger. I have not, I have not seen that person yet. Um, I don't believe that person exists. I think everyone, it doesn't matter if someone's in a wheelchair, it doesn't matter if somebody doesn't have any arms, it doesn't, I mean, if you're alive, if you're a living human being, then you possess the ability not only to get stronger, like forget the gym for a second, just to get better, period. You know, everyone possesses the ability to learn. I mean, it doesn't matter what someone was born with or what someone was born without. I find that fascinating. I think that's really cool. And that's one of the reasons why I made the gym freaks. I wanted to lower that. I wanted to say, hey, let's not, let's not worry about that. You know, I hear people kind of squawking that it's a hundred bucks a month or whatever. Let's just, let's just get rid of that. I don't have the gym to make money anyway. And the gym was never really, it was never set up to be profitable. I never cared about the gym uh, in that sense. I just wanted the gym to be, I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be fun. The gym was set up for very selfish reasons. I just wanted to be as strong as I could possibly be initially. And so, and again, you know, going back to the interest, like the gym is, the gym was set up for selfish reasons. The slingshot was made for selfish reasons. I made a uh, compression cuff for your elbow, which a lot of other companies have copied. Uh, I made, I made that with the intention of it being for me. Like I made a lot of things for me and I set things up for myself. 
And then it just happened to be like, I was like, okay, well, I could probably share this out with other people and this would be cool. When I was recording a lot of the lifts, it was the same thing. It was for selfish reasons. I wanted to get better at squatting. So I'm like, let me record these. And I started recording them in 2005. And then I kind of, a lot of the other lifters in the gym started squatting seven, eight, 900 pounds. And I was like, I got to film them too, because people are going to be interested in this stuff. This is crazy to see seven, eight, nine, uh, 45 pound plates on each side of the bar. People are going to freak out when they see this stuff and no one cared, you know, no one cared for, you know, a decade. And, and now people, now people, I think, I think they enjoy powerlifting and we're going to see uh Hapthor Bjornsson go for a, uh, 500, 501 kg uh, deadlift on ESPN uh, in a, in about a week or so. So that's that's super exciting. But yeah, made it free initially, just kind of lower that barrier of entry and to and to set up the right environment. You know, I've learned from Louis Simmons that if you walk with the lame, you'll develop a limp. And I I've never wanted to I never wanted to train with people that are going to half-ass it. So that is the one rule if there is any rule to super training gym is like, I just, I want to see you working hard. That's what you pay with. You pay with your, your blood, sweat and tears. I don't care about the weight that you lift. Uh, but I want you to contribute. I want you to, uh, help load plates. I want you to help spot. I want you to participate. I want you to yell at somebody when they're about to do a lift because we're all in it together. It's very difficult to get stronger and let's figure out a way to make it easier to get stronger. And I believe it's easier to get stronger and it's easier to get better at fitness in a group setting than it is by yourself. Yeah. Wow. You've do, you're doing, obviously doing some, uh, doing some amazing stuff there. And, um, you yeah, know, it's, it's, it's inspiring to hear sort of not just the stories come out of it, but yeah, what you're, what you're, what you're doing with that and, and with the gym and, and so and up. I had to, just as we bring uh, things to a close, I had one final sort of thing to. Um, so it goes right back to you. Uh, I really enjoyed the fact that you said you were you're doing your your body weight squats and doing your push ups um, and sort of enjoying the different challenge um, that that may may bring. And just wondered whether you have thought about or have tried to look at any sort of progressions of of some of those more simple body weight movements that you've done. So sort of rather than boshing out 40, 50, 60 pushups, do you play around with like doing a single arm push up or any other sort of push up variations or rather than just doing more pull ups, looking at trying to do, do a muscle up on the bar. Is that something that you've thought about or during this time think, Oh, maybe actually I could look at doing some of those things a little bit differently. I, I think it'll be a natural progression because uh, like it just feels better. Right. So yeah. Um, again, you know, I've been encouraging people to do these 10 minute walks for, I don't know, five, six years now. Um, and as I you know, started, I would do two or three 10 minute walks a day. I, a lot of times I'd take a phone call and I'd pop on a you know, walk and I would just walk for 10, 15 minutes, maybe. Well, now I walk for hours, you know, and a lot of times during my walks, I'm running. And kind of same things happening here with the, with the squats, you know, sometimes I'll squat onto a bench that's kind of high. Other times I might, cause I don't have great mobility in like my ankles and heels and stuff. So yeah. sometimes I'll put something under my heels, uh, to do like an Olympic squat and do a, um, I guess you would call it like a Hindu squat, you know, get a full range of motion squat. And I might, might put a weight vest on and I might even hold a little bit of weight in my hands and, and try a hundred squats that way. So I've been, uh, kind of naturally leaning into doing different progressions. I've been yeah. doing push-ups with a 40 pound weight vest as well. Um, yesterday I did 300 push-ups. So it just, it, it kind of just, uh, depends, but like I'm feeling so good as I'm doing it because I'm in, I'm encouraged to do it more and more because I'm feeling better and better all the time. So as you feel better with it, you get a little more uh, like frisky, you know, you're like, Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, can, yeah. I could try this. So Do else, the other yeah. day I was, yeah, the other day I was doing push ups, and I was like, okay, I think I can leave the ground on every single push up. Oh, nice. You know, I was yeah. trying, I was trying to do like 200 of them back and forth with some squats and, and back and forth with some, uh, we were running some, uh, stairs and I just wanted to make sure that I could do it the whole time though. You know, so I did like 15 reps every single time just give myself a good little pop off the ground type of thing but i haven't really messed with you know transitioning into things um that are too complex or too complicated but um it, I, so far i'm feeling good I, I really would like to work on some more lunging 
just because like my knees are a little weird and uh, I'd love to kind of continue to build up strength uh, in the knees. Um, but yeah, other than that, I've been keeping it, I've been keeping it pretty simple. Nice. Looking after the basics. Yeah. You never, never, never go wrong looking after the basics. What are some of your favorites that you guys like to do? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, but just I was just thinking push-ups wise, when you when you're knocking out that many number of push-ups, thinking, well, what about looking at some some single arm push-ups, um, looking at some typewriter arch push-ups where you sort of transition over to one side, so one mm-hmm. side's like the other arm out straight, you know. Um it's just the like, plan- load, like the, loading the punch up the, variations I like. Yeah. You know, if you put a real forward lean on it, so it becomes a bit more like a decline press in, in many ways in terms of the position of the hands in relation to the chest. But those get hard really quick. And if you've got an opportunity to throw um, your feet in a set of gymnastics rings and then lean forward into that planche position and then start to work in those kind of shapes, you, you sort of a sudden, you throw that instability into it and then it's just a different ball game altogether. And that, we, we probably quite have a lot of fun with that sort of stuff. A big, a big part of us around calisthenics is, um, is play. As a play with movement, and mm. if we can get strong and play at the same time, and we like the variety and and just trying out different sort of things, um, and the same with the dips yeah. as well, like the basics of just like Russian dips or um, or Korean dips, and just just challenging yourself to move in a different way. And if you, when you're doing that with strength, and you can do ten, then as you say, you put a vest on, or we start playing around a bit more with tempo, or um, putting supersets together, and um, yeah, that's probably like a bit of a, yeah. a we. We often get distracted by playing and, um, <laughs> and not enough actually getting on with the with the uh, the reps and sets sometimes. But it's uh, that it's uh, from us as you mentioned before. It's a it's a passion. It's a mental health thing. The yeah. the, the the freedom to play with movement is just a, a really rewarding thing. And I think the push up is such a like a, a foundation like pressing movement. Like it is so good, but for a lot of people, once they can do quite a number of them. They, it can be a bit stagnant and a bit boring. And actually there's, you can be, there's so many different options and being creative with it that it can, it can be not only just like challenging from a strength perspective, you think of what some of those single arm progressions look like, but um, it's fun. Like Tim says, it's, it's fun to do that. And I don't know, depending on where people are at in their mindset for their training, like if I'm having a good time whilst I'm training as part of it, then, and as long Mm -hmm. as it's still challenging me, that sort of, it keeps me a little bit more engaged probably. Whereas if you said, I'm just going to do 100 push up normal push-ups in a row, like, well, I'll probably automatically start moving my hand position, look at some diamonds, look at some wider ones. Like, just, just give myself some different movement options. I think um, the shoulders really enjoy that, um, but also it keeps my brain engaged. It exposes your weaknesses as well. I think yeah. that's a real powerful thing in training. Like, I want to know what I can't do, um, and let me do more of that because that's yeah. the, the weak link in the chain. Um, so yeah, challenging myself in, in, in those positions. It's uh, we always talk about calisthenics. It's something you've mentioned before as well about ego. Like it's massively humbling. You look at people look at a muscle up and they're like, I should be able to do that. I can do pull ups. I can do dips. Why can't I do a muscle up? I'm like, well, it's because you're not fast enough, um, and you've now got to go away and got to start to go and develop some speed because you can't pull explosively. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy being humbled by my training and realizing there's still stuff that I've got to put groundwork in for. How do you guys define calisthenics? Well, that's a good question. Uh, it's, it's probably most closely, if you were to kind of give it a label as gymnastic strength-based work, um, but without the artistic elements of it. No, but the, the the <laughs> yeah, and we're not so much on pointy toes. Um, but it's, it, it can take a number of forms. So freestyle calisthenics where they'll have battle of the bars type things where it becomes very sort of acrobatic-based. Um, and then you've got th- all the end of the spectrum, you've got the, the sort of the real strength based guys that just want to do 32 kilo muscle ups. Um, and they go after the sort of like numbers of, of, of just that sort of stuff. And then um, our kind of focus is probably somewhere where we just enjoy moving well, moving clean, getting strong and having fun with training. And it's what we find with calisthenics is it's um, it just it, there's there's always more progressions. There's always something new to learn. Once you've done a handstand, we can now you can start working on handstand push-ups, and that kind of puts you back at day one again because you've got to go and earn the right to go and go and play at that level. Um, so yeah, body weight training. But we've had this Jack and this conversation before. Like, it, it, is a body weight squat when you put a weight vest on? Is that still calisthenics, or are we now doing weighted training? Because what's the difference between a weighted vest and a barbell in terms of um, load? it's the same thing we're just yeah. overloading the system um is a weighted pull-up now calisthenics or not um so it's all like you say i think you, you get, this is kind of brought us full circle it's all yeah. the same stuff right it's just the expression of like i can't put 387 kilos on a, on a weight vest and do, uh, do my push-ups <laughs> so i have you to guys, kind of uh, 
you guys track your heart rate and stuff? You do check on that a little bit. Uh, I do, Jacko. You don't do so much, do you? But I've got a I've got a heart rate um, monitor that I, I wear in training that I just quite enjoy seeing what I'm doing. I think over the years I've got a um, a fairly good intrinsic um, monitor. I know when I'm at zone five, let's call it that, or ninety percent. I know when I'm probably roughly around sixty, seventy percent, just from from years in the, of doing it. But um, I do like to sort of see. But the big one that I like on my heart rate is my recovery. I, I sometimes use that for rest periods. Like when the heart rate drops, I'm going to go again. Um, it's just an interesting one. Jack, have you got any thoughts on that? Um, no, I'm, I'm tracking my waking heart rate at the moment, actually, but not um, just not during training time. Um, I was going to say something on. Um, um, I've forgotten now. It's about those progressions. <laughs> what about <laughs> something? Uh, so, like, I, you know, I, I tell people about these, you know, walks all the time, and I've been trying to encourage people to, you know, occasionally run and stuff. And I'm like checking my own heart rate and stuff. And I'm not trying to get my, I'm not trying to like make my heart rate go crazy. Uh, here and there, I'll do like a hill sprint and stuff like that, trying to get my hamstrings used to some sprints. But maybe there's uh, a couple of good exercises that you know, someone could do during a walk. I mean, it seemed like, you know, I, I've been, so every time I walk past something that I can do like a box squat onto, I just automatically yeah. squat on it now. Cause here where I'm at, like there's a lot of hills. And so obviously walking the hills gets your heart rate up, but, but you walk downhill quite a bit too. So sometimes I'll just stop and I'll do like a squat. Like what are maybe some good ways to, you know, get your heart rate up, maybe not even just for a 10 minute walk, but just maybe in between, I don't know, in between doing a bodybuilding back exercise or something, you know what I mean? Like just something that's obviously a burpee, I think is, is like kind of the classic go-to just kill your heart rate. But what you guys have a couple suggestions for that? Cause I could, I could easily implement some of that while I'm here. Yeah. I think there's some interesting stuff and I'm, I'm kind of aware that there's a conversation in the training world about whether we should be using plyometrics for conditioning based work. Um, but if I wanted to go heart rate and I've, so I've got a, I've got a small garden. If I'm going to train and I want a metabolic session, I'm I'm just going to go on back to back. So it might be pull ups, dips. So let's say real simple. I'm going to do a set of rounds. I'm going to go ten pull ups, fifteen dips, twenty push ups, back to back. Um, and if I want to maintain heart rate within those, then I'm going to go and do lunge jumps or vertical jumps or mm. something like that. Something where I've got an explosive element or or a plyometric push up variation. And I think I'm I'm not one for sort of an advocate of let's do a hundred sort of high intensity plyometrics because you've obviously got a this a stability of um, a movement quality issue to, to throw into the mix a bit as well but i think you can't if you want to get heart rate up in a short amount of, in a small space with bodyweight exercises um if you if your rest periods are going to go circuit style throw some something explosive in there and it will um, it will do the job yeah i think like you're a split um, jump split yeah. jump or just like a squat jump or something like that yeah, and and the split jump goes back to your lunge pattern. Like, what do I, we kind of talk a bit about longevity and what are the sorts of things I want to be able to do when I'm 60, 70 years old? Well, I still like to be able to run a little bit, and I kind of want to have enough reactive stability and strength that I can jump down off a curb if if I need to, or jump out the way of a car. And these kind of let's throw in, in inverted commas like in, in functional patterns of being able to to move explosively in, in, in a split bipedal kind of pattern i don't think there's some value in that sort of stuff and and being able to do it when you're tired is a uh, is also you get what you train for right so and, and we we should train the things that we want to keep yeah and even with those lunge patterns like you know not just staying in that sort of sagittal plane but looking at some lateral movements as as well like when you start to feel more confident and comfortable with those positions is definitely going to help um, if, so in terms of your uh, your burpee set, talking about burpees, a burpee with a box jump is an absolute destroyer. If you want to really get get your heart rate up, that's pretty disgusting. Um, well, even, a burpee d- and a pull up it doesn't have to be very. <laughs> but do I mean it doesn't have to be very. The difference between if you do a burpee and like a little jump, you you end up being like when you give yourself the outcome of like whatever box or step or whatever it may be, don't do anything too like crazy high, but something that's making you have to like put that extra little bit of explosive work mm. in to get onto something that always that always does i remember the thing actually that i, that I forgot then when it was about um what so calisthenics comes from two greek words kalos and stenos which mean beauty and strength so ultimately mm-hmm. like with with using your own body weight to be sort of that beautifully strong it just made me think of some of the stuff you were saying about clean lifts like it should look good your first rep should look as good as your last rep um there's there's some real nice there's some real nice similarities and crossover in philosophy on that 
my last point on that one, which is the other thing that we introduced over the summer, which I want to get back in my program is when myself, my wife just went and did a 25, 30 minute sprint session. Um, and, and I just, I, I think running hills, short hills, short burst, 10, 20, 30 meter sprint efforts. Like you said before about going back to having the, 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 um, the base level kind of stability, move range and movement stuff is important. But like, again, a human, humans are designed to, to run. And if we run fast, it gets the heart rate up and it's a great conditioning tool. Mm -hmm. Um, I think those are those are some just interesting. If you throw push ups and some stuff in with some sprints, you're gonna know about it, I reckon, pretty soon. So have you guys been watching any of the CrossFit stuff that's like on Netflix, you know, now that you have maybe a little bit of downtime? I've uh, I've watched a yeah. couple of them actually, yeah. Well bits of. Yeah, yeah insane. Uh, to me it's yeah, it's like a, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um I find some of the exercises and stuff they do just to be crazy, like a uh you know, walking overhead lunges like with and and i mean i i don't i forget what the kind of weights are that girls are using but oh man i want to say they had like a 53 pound kettlebell or something i mean it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know how they're it's embarrassing to me because i'm like i can't do one of those and they just went a whole football field <laughs> yeah. you know length it's unbelievable and the bodies on on the women and and the, the men are just yeah, like the physiques people are just they're really jacked and they're really able to move really well it's, pr it's pretty damn impressive yeah, they yeah. they make they have to do a bit of everything, don't they? So, um, yeah, it's hats off to them. It's uh, you you won't be seeing me at a competition these <laughs> days, anything like that these days. Crikey! I used to think we like when I played rugby, we had to do you know you had to be strong, you had to be fast, you had to be agile, you had to take impact. Um, used to think we had to do quite a lot of various different things in our training to be like quite a good all round athlete, but. But yeah, it's still um, it's still nothing like what those guys have to do for the next. But even in CrossFit, it's been interesting to see them introduce strict form movements, yeah. so strict handstand push-ups, strict muscle-ups, and and it levelled people to start off with. All of a sudden, they just couldn't. There was there was athletes there that are insane at everything else, but they couldn't do a strict ring muscle-up. Mm. Um, and I think that's uh, one thing I, I admire CrossFit for is they are very very good at continuing to challenge the the athletes and change the game they like yeah. they don't stand still um you can't get good at crossfit really to a level that is outplays where crossfit can take the, the realms of that sport there will always be something which they can do to, to, to catch yeah, people just out make it just make it harder yeah it's impressive <laughs> yeah. yeah it's impressive Mark, we're going to wrap it up mate thank you so much for your time um it's been an absolutely brilliant conversation and, and um yeah, it was just, just absolute fantastic shared knowledge in there. And, and um, we really thank you for, for giving us that time and, and, uh, and wisdom. Appreciate it, man. Thank you guys so much. So once again, another fantastic podcast. Thank you so much to Mark Bell for being our guest this week. Uh, we have nothing else to say apart from until next time. Class is dismissed. So thank you so much again for listening. We don't take it lightly that you uh, give up probably an hour of your time to listen to these podcasts. So we really do appreciate that. We hope you got a lot of value out of it, guys. And we would, if you did, we would love you to do a couple of things for us. One of them is tell other people and share it if you thought that we were adding some value. And also, if you want to, pop over to iTunes or wherever you're listening to this and give us a five-star review. We like five stars. Four stars, not as good keep it five are the best five of your best stars please <laughs> and if you would like to find out more about the school of calisthenics and see the best of everything that we have got head over to our virtual classroom you can access it from the website at schoolofcalisthenics.com and that is where we have got literally possibly the best calisthenics resource available anywhere in the world it's definitely the best one we've done and on that note until next week class dismissed <laughs>